Hey friends, Dustin Hutchinson here with Sunblessed Farms. I'm one of the sales associates that we've got over here. Um, we're gonna go through a walkthrough today with the Harvest Right Medium Freeze Dryer. We've got a couple here. One's getting ready to be sold on Friday. This is uh, the model that we're gonna use for this video. And then we've got our other medium over here on the counter. That one's the one that we pulled out to set up as our training aid for the classes that we're doing on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 5 p.m. Western Pacific Standard Time. So what we're doing right now is just a real basic walkthrough of what's gonna come in the box, what you should look for, uh, what you should expect, how to inspect it for damage, uh, whether you should or shouldn't accept delivery based on what you find. Um, for instance, we had a unit show up a while back that had, uh, had been tipped over in the FedEx truck. So we decided not to receive that one just to make sure that there was no, uh, no problems with it down the road since it would be going to a customer. This pallet with everything on it weighs about 160 pounds. So you're gonna wanna have the uh, FedEx freight guy drop it off for you. If you gotta load it in a truck or anything, you're gonna want the help of a friend. Pop it apart if you need to, to load the two things separately. Uh, when we load them, we try and keep it on the pallet, strapped down, and then this part um, can go separately in the person's vehicle or whatever. So here comes the big unboxing. So now that we've determined that there's no damage with the unit, we don't see any visible damage from the uh, shipping, no forklift punctures or anything like that. What comes in the box, you've got the Harvest Right freeze drying guide, the owner's manual. There's a disclaimer that says that you need to contact Harvest Right if there's any problems with the machine. We do act as a liaison between you and Harvest Right to help make sure that we apply and you get the results that you need. And then there's a bit of the firmware um, troubleshooting guide in case it's a software problem or something like that. And then really important is your warranty card. You can do this online or you can mail it in. Um, for the last two machines that we got for our use, the XLs over in the corner there, we went ahead and did that online because the XL was not listed on this um, placard here on this little card. So we went ahead and uh, did that online, but make sure that as soon as you get it and you've unboxed it, that you get this filled out and sent in. So Har uh, Harvest Right doesn't give you a hard time down the road. Uh, in the box, you'll get 50 bags to use for uh, freeze drying. You get 50 oxygen absorbers. This is a medium. So you get four trays with it. These are, uh, nice and dainty in comparison to the XL trays. You're gonna get your vacuum hose and the power cord for the unit. You're gonna get your filter pitcher. You're gonna get an impulse sealer. That's how you seal those bags once you get them filled. Quick note on that, if you're gonna fill them and you're doing anything powdery, make sure that the area you're gonna impulse seal is clean and clear of any dust or debris. That way it actually gets a good seal. So, and then most importantly in this box is your vacuum pump. So all of our kits come with the Premier Oil Pump, and this one is a great low-cost option. Uh, it's actually not an option, it comes standard, but this one is low maintenance and very affordable. Uh, if, you wanted, if you have a um, Harvest Right machine and you wanna upgrade, this is a $795 option, and we can get those for you too if you want. Great performance out of them. As you can see, that's all that we use here. We personally don't bother uh, going with the higher cost of the oil-free pump. We just don't see the economics working out for us. If you want it, we're happy to sell it to you. So that's what comes in the top box. All right, so this is obviously an empty box because our machine's already over there, but we're gonna show you the type of packaging that comes in it. 
pop, top slides off. The machine's going to come wrapped in a bag and uh, with a warning on it. Do not lift the door uh, freezer by the door. So make sure when you lift it to put it up on your shelf, you're grabbing it by the base. So you can see they actually do a really good job with their packaging to make sure it's not getting banged up in transit. And then each machine is going to come with a, um, a sign off sheet because they've gone through and they've done a function test before it leaves the factory. So theoretically, everything should be working as planned and as you uh, expect for this. So let's walk over to the machine real quick. Now you can probably see we've got the XL units up there and the medium unit. There's a drastic size difference between these machines. Uh, the XL units, they're heavy. You're gonna need two strong people to do anything with it. The medium unit is really uh, user friendly in terms of its size and weight and ability to move it around and stuff like that. So I gotta tell you, being able to do four times as much stuff in that machine as these machines, it's beautiful. Love it. So when the machine comes out, you're gonna wanna set up your pump. Uh, these things, it's important to make sure that it stays level. You don't wanna tip it for any reason. Obviously it comes um, in the machine on its side or in the box, I should say on its side. But once you get it set up and you start putting oil in it, you wanna leave it on a nice flat level surface. Uh, this black thing on the top here is called the demister. So in the instructions, you'll see that you need to remove this to fill it with oil. The oil goes in here. Each machine comes with a quart of oil. Uh, the medium units take about a half of this bottle to fill. And if you can zoom in here a little bit, we wanna make sure that you're fill right to the middle here and not overfill it and obviously not underfill it to prevent damage to the machine. Uh, to drain it, it's a simple twist of this knob here. I've already drained this one because uh, it's in between uses, but it's just a simple twist of the knurled knob here. If you need to, what I've done before when it was stiff and new, you just take a quarter and put it in there and that helps to turn it. And then with this, just make sure you thread it back on. There's an O-ring here that you wanna make sure is in place. And then I'd spin it backwards a little bit just to make sure the threads are engaged. And then I go down and just a little bit tight. You don't need to wrench on it. You don't want it to be too tight. And then one thing that I noticed when I was setting this up, if you can zoom in here on the vacuum hose, these are a typical tapered fitting and there's a little O-ring inside of there. What I noticed, and I had a little bit of a vacuum leak on one of them, is if this is not straight on there, when you tighten it down, it will bind out of alignment See how it was kind of misaligned there and it feels tight, but once you do that, it's not tight anymore. So give it a little wiggle as you're putting it on there. And then when you tighten it down, that makes sure it's seated properly and you'll get a good seal on that. Same thing on the unit here. It's the same exact fitting, same thing. Make sure that that's on there nice and straight. So it's getting a good even uh, contact with the, uh, the fitting there. Now, when the machine comes, it's gonna have a piece of styrofoam in here to protect it. And the rack is not gonna be connected. It should just be sitting in there. Oftentimes it's on its side. So if you wanna pull off this ring, you can see it's got a nice groove in there that fits onto the cylinder. These mediums, pretty lightweight. This is all aluminum and then uh, Underneath, you can probably see the orange. This is some sort of uh, silicone heating mat that's got the, uh, the coils built right into it. It's also got temperature sensing in it. And then with the, uh, the plug here, so we went ahead and uh, as we were pulling this apart for you guys, we realized that our O-ring is missing. There's supposed to be um, a multi-rib gasket that goes around here. This seals in with this, uh, this fitting here. So. We're not sure if that popped off when we were first setting the machine up and cleaning it or if it uh, you know, just popped off now, but we're gonna proceed as if. So uh, it doesn't take much force for this. One thing that I've seen in some of the groups 
is people will have a hard time with their heating rack, but if you look, they'll have a pin that's burned out and you'll see you know, black arcing around it or something like that. So periodically when you're doing your maintenance on the machine and you're doing your cleaning in between runs, you wanna give this an inspection and make sure that it's looking good. So we're gonna put this back together. We're gonna to run it as if, and we're just gonna put this back in the machine. And one thing I like to do so that I know the uh, rack is gonna go all the way back into the back of the machine is I keep my hand up here and I just kind of work this cord so that it stays up on there. And that way when the rack's back in the machine, it's seated fully. So I'll go ahead and put this ring back on, give it an inspection, make sure there's no nut nicks, cuts or anything like that in it, make sure it's clean. And then just gently push it back in. All right. So I had to make a quick adjustment. So we'll get this ring put back on here. Doesn't take it. None of this takes any force. You shouldn't have to force anything. If you come in closer, you can see the rack is actually set back a little bit from this silicone ring. So you should have a little space there. You shouldn't have to push against this. This will make sure that it's seated nice and evenly around the cylinder. When the door closes, you should see a ring pretty much all the way around. If there's small gaps, that's fine. This door is built to move a little bit. It's supposed to have a little bit of give this way so that it can actually compress against the door without binding up on the hinge or putting any extra pressure on the, um, on the latch here. So if you come in, Mike, we're gonna do, uh, we're just gonna show some information here. So just by hitting this harvest right, It'll pull up your setup configuration. See how it says uh, pump premier oil. When you do your first run, the machine is gonna ask you what type of pump you have, a standard, a premier oil, or an oilless pump. Um, since we have the uh, premier oil pump, we went ahead and selected the premier oil pump option. And then it just, you hit save on that screen and that sets it up and it'll just start doing what you need it to do on that initial run. So. You can go through and set the time if it's different from where you are. We have to adjust it uh, based on this being manufactured in Utah and we're the next um, time zone over. So I'm actually going to do that because that's wrong right now. So it's actually 4.32 p.m. And obviously today's the 25th of May, 2023. So we're going to do a quick function test. I'm going to have you back up a little, Mike, to focus over here, because we're going to see, once I turn this freezer on, we're going to get an ice ring really fast. And these ice rings should come almost the full depth of the cylinder in here. Based just on the humidity in the air, we should see an ice ring start to form right in there or right in here, just back off the face a little bit. But you'll be able to monitor the change in temperature going on up here. Yeah, so we're already starting to get changes. It had switched to negative one. And it will fluctuate a little bit as it's going through as the, sen uh, the sensors are checking it. See, there we go. So I'm going to pop this open. You can, I can already see a ice ring starting to form right there. And then, yeah, it's already cold. You can see it starting to form right there. These mediums are really efficient when it comes to this. So the heater, we're going to turn that on. And similarly, when you first get your machine doing this function test, reach in here and you'll start to feel that heating coil is already starting to get warm. Yep. So these heating pads radiate the heat up through the aluminum rack into the stainless steel trays. And I can already start to feel them getting warm. And then it's got this coroplast material with this um, heat resistant tape to keep it, uh, to keep air and whatnot out of here. But it's also like a high temperature double sided tape to keep it stuck to the rack. And that helps insulate it a little bit. So your heat's not just radiating off into the atmosphere in there. Um, I do have some oil here, so I'm gonna put some oil in the pump and then we're gonna do a quick vacuum test. So
So this is not new oil. This will have an amber color to it. New oil will be perfectly clear. I'm going to grab one of these other jugs we got over here and add a little more to it. So it's okay if the oil gets to be an amber color, but you don't want it to be cloudy. Cloudy oil is probably contaminated with water, which is what you can see here. See the little uh, discoloration down at the bottom there? That's because there's water in that oil. So if that happens, get rid of that oil. All right, so we're a little fuller than I would normally do, but that's okay. All right, if you want to come up here, I'll switch places with you. So everything is done. Let me hit this drain valve. So on the side of the machine, you'll have a drain valve and a drain hose. Just put it down in a bucket or something. And then make sure it's closed. And then for this, we'll just do a quick vacuum test. You can see that the uh, mTOR start off. This one says 22,000. These other machines will sometimes say 60,000 something. So it should start, uh, start pulling that vacuum down pretty fast. We're already down at 17,000 something. So with this, we're gonna shoot for, a, um, we're not gonna bring it all the way down because that takes a little while, but we're gonna try and get it down to about 1800 mTOR just to show how fast it can happen. The XL units, they give you the option to set a target mTOR, which I usually set at 250. Um, and that, that gets a really good result. These things will run typically between 149, 150 mTOR up to about 350 mTOR. And there's a direct relationship between the heat in the unit, the cold in the unit, and the, the actual pressure or lack of pressure. So the colder it is, the lower the pressure can be, the warmer it is, the, the harder the vacuum pump has to work to maintain that same pressure. So you could see we went from 22,000 something down to 4,000 something in just over a minute here. So less than a minute and a half. And we're probably gonna hit that 1800 in, I don't know, six or seven minutes. We won't make you stick around for all of that. But you can see, as Michael is showing here with the camera, you get a nice thick ring as that uh, seal compresses and pulls that door closed. So now, there's actually no pressure on this latch. So it's already got a really good, strong vacuum going in there. Latch is not even uh, necessary anymore. So the, the lower the mTOR gets, the slower it will progress because that machine is having to work harder and harder and harder to pull that level of vacuum. So the lower it gets, the longer it's going to take. So I'm actually going to stop this. So you can see in just over two minutes, we got down to under 2000 mTOR. And you want to be below, anything below 1000 is considered normal with the newer software. Um, but you should see your uh, machine performing significantly better than that. If it's not, then we need to go through and do some vacuum checks. Thankfully on these, we've had pretty good luck. And I'm actually surprised how low we're getting that fast, two and a half minutes. So I'm going to stop that. I'm going to release the drain valve. And that's, so that uh, correlation between pressure and temperature, this drain valve is now cold because the temperature is lower. And when you do release it, make sure you don't suck up a bunch of water out of your bucket. Keep your bucket maintained and dry. So. So you can see the mTORs are already going back up. The machine, no more vacuum. So we'll be done with that. 
So we're going to wrap this up um, with a quick note. When you get your machine, before you do anything else, before you go through and do a candy run or any sort of food run or anything like that, it's important to do a bread run. So get yourself a loaf of bread, fill up your trays with bread, mist them down with some water so they've got some excess moisture in them, and then load them into your machine. And it's as simple as hitting start and letting it run. What that's gonna do is test the performance of the machine as well as so it's going to go through a 15 minute uh, cooling cycle before it asks you to load anything in. During that 15 minutes, that's when you should be loading up your, uh, your trays with your bread and whatnot and doing the misting. Again, that's going to be a performance test for your machine and that bread is going to absorb any of that stale air from the manufacturing process or anything like that. It'll get kind of that new car smell out of it. That way when you run it, your food doesn't have an off taste or anything like that. But once that's done and you've pulled the bread out, you want to test it to make sure it's dry and crispy. There's no excess moisture. Uh, make sure that it's done what you expected it to do. Uh, and this thing is built full of sensors. So it's testing that atmosphere constantly to make sure that it's pulling all the moisture out. The moisture will wind up condensed on the inside of the machine. So when you're done for, uh, for the performance of the machine, make sure you do a defrost cycle and uh, that will keep the machine happy so you'll have less, vac less chance of vacuum errors or anything like that. But once you've done your bread run and you're ready to rock and roll, throw out the bread, it's no good. And then uh, you can go ahead and start doing lemon heads or bit of honey or Jolly Ranchers or whatever it else uh, you want to run in it. Or food if that's your game. So that's about all we got for today for this uh, unboxing and whatnot. Um, <laughs> I'm being prompted to, to remind you that uh, these machines are available at storecda.com. We are doing uh, the twice weekly classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays. If you want to come and visit us and see these machines up front, we're uh, in Biztown Loop on West Hayden Ave in Hayden, Idaho. And our website is storecda.com if you're interested in the machines. We do have a website for our treats, idahofreezedry.com. And uh, that's a wrap for us here at Sun Blessed Farms. Thank you so much for spending the time with us, and we'll see you next time.